Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to make Roblox thumbnails such as this. The only things you're going to need for this tutorial is Roblox Studio, a add-on called Moon Animator, and Blender. This is a tutorial for PC players only, so if you play on mobile, go find another tutorial, maybe I'll make one, who knows. First thing you're going to want to do is go into the description and download Moon Animator. Once it is downloaded, open up Roblox Studio and go into the plugin section where you should find something called Moon Animator right here. To start off, select the avatar icon and then you can insert whatever character you want using the player name slash ID. So I'm going to put in my avatar for this and you can either pick between R6 or R15. R6 if you want to go fully simple Roblox or R15 if you want more dynamic poses. So I'm going to pick R15 though because that's what I personally prefer. And so you have to press insert and insert them into, well the Roblox Studio game, obviously. Once it is in, go into properties and change the origin position to 0, 3, 0. This will allow it to be easier when you eventually open this up using Vendor. For my thumbnail, I want to implicate a sword into it, but you don't have to do this. If you want to add an item to it, just click on the item. Then you need to position it in his hand, which I have already done. And then what you need to do is put it inside the original character then hold control and click onto the body part that is connected to. So for example, this is the right, no, this is the left hand, my bad. So then you click on it, then go on to plugins, press the screwdriver and then press on parts and then press join in place. And then you'll be able to move around the object with the hand. Then click on the square with the moon inside of it, press file, press new animation and then call it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter, so just spam it such as I just did. Press confirm, then move it to the side Press the plus symbol, select your avatar, and then they either comes comes up with rig or C frame. Don't have C frame ticked, only have rig ticked. Press OK, and then you should be able to animate the entire body. Just like that. I'm gonna make him do a character with a sword pose. So create yours. The controls are so when you're moving the arm, if you press R, you can move it to left and right, and then if you press R again, you can like rotate it and stuff. Create yours, then come back to the video. So here is my final product for the animation. This one only took me about five minutes. So once you have done it, you're going to want to save the animation just in case Roblox Studio just completely crashes. So just click save, make sure it's there. So then select your character and press anchor. And then right click on the name in the Explorer tab. And then go down to Export Selection. So name it whatever you want, something recognizable so you won't forget it once you eventually open up Blender. So I'm just going to say noob with a sword then press save and that is the final part of the video that you actually need to use with roblox studio just call it test thumbnail or something then you can just create it just to make sure that you still have it in case you want to ever change your mind on it but apart from that you can just completely close roblox studio for the next part of the video you are going to need to use blender so go in the link in the description and download blender once it is downloaded come back to the video and then we can start with the actual rendering part once you have opened Blender, you're going to have to select the fourth circle up here and you're going to want to delete the cube because otherwise it will just interfere with your final actual looking product by pressing the delete button. Then you're going to, want to go onto files, press import, wavefront obj and then click on the file that you used before. So mine is noob with a sword. Once it is in, it should be in the center if you set the positions to the right place and you can use this little circle around here to move it around. The controls are a little bit confusing, but if you press view, um, go into navigation, go down to um, walk navigation, right click, then press a uh, shortcut, then press a key that you want to do a shortcut in. For example, I'll press F. So now whenever I press F, it puts me in like the Roblox Studio type where you can just use the mouse to look around, which I think is a lot easier. The game already starts with a camera, as you can see right here. So what you're going to want to do is press view, press cameras, um, activate cam camera and then you can also change a shortcut for example mine is zero so when I press zero it will take me inside the camera and then if you press the button for walk navigation you can move the camera around just like Roblox Studio and position it just how you want once you have placed it in a position that you like we have to add lighting as currently it is quite dark but it's very simple the way you do this you can either press add and then go down to light you can either use the Sun or a points. I'd recommend putting a sun layer over it. If you press the lamp down here, you can change the color of the sun, but for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna make the sun maybe bluish. I recommend adding, and then go into lights, and then I recommend adding a an area. You should see, if you come up the camera, you should see the area. 
which is basically just a flat square. So then press the scale and you can scale it up. Maybe move your position around just so you can see it a bit more clearly. Once it is in a position that you're happy with, press zero again or whatever your keyframe is for the uh, camera and then change the color and power. I recommend making the power a bit higher just depending on how high you want the contrast to be. Maybe I think I'm going to put mine about 75 as there's still clearly shadows and you can change the color as well which is more obvious when it's that high of a contrast. And then you're going to want to press the little TV screen in the corner on this row here and then go move all the way down, press film and then change it to transparent. And if that's what you're happy with for your final product, obviously you could have more lighting, then press render and then go on to render image. The rendering of the image shouldn't normally take very long. It's just because I'm recording, it will take a bit longer. There we go, see, not even that long. So then you can click image and then press save as and save it wherever you want. You don't have to save it if you don't want to, but I'm just gonna save it. For the next part, we need to get a background. Obviously, you could just get one from Google Images. I'm just going to take a screenshot of a Roblox game. I'd recommend making the graphics quality the highest as possible just to make it look have the best look. So just take a screenshot of the surroundings. Like I'll probably just take a screenshot of this area right here. So I go on to Snipping Tool. So then just simply press New on the Snipping Tool and just take a picture of the surroundings. It doesn't need to look great because it will be for the, the surroundings, which I recommend blurring, but for now, that looks overall fine. Save it into your computer so in case you accidentally screenshot something else and it isn't on your clipping board anymore. Next up, I need you to go on to Photopia, which is an online editor just like Photoshop, but it is for free, so it works out. Then go on to File, and then go on to Open, and open your original file, which you should have saved. As you can see, mine's here. I just called it AAAA because I was lazy, but then press Open, and then everything should be right in front of there for you. Yep, right here. You can move it around if you want, say if you want to fit text in this area, such as I'm going to do. Move it to the corner a bit so you have more room for everything else. Then you're going to want to collect, select uh, this layer button right here. Pull it underneath the background. And then um, if it's still saved to your snipping tool, just press Control V. And then you should be able to fill it in the area right here for the background. Okay, I have put it down just like this. I think it overall looks very good. But something I'd recommend, go into blending options on the main background character. And you have a bunch of different settings, such as a stroke, which uh, and you can add a white line around if you change the color to white. And then change up the size. This is how I do a lot of my thumbnails. Uh, it, and overall, it does make it look a, um, a lot better. Because it, it can look like it's just a paste. But you can also add things such as drop shadows to make it look like it is um, actually kind of in the area, as you can see, just like that. Once you have messed around with all those settings, just press OK, and next up you're going to want to make a new layer, and if you want to add some text, paste in the text like that. Once you have it all written down, you can change the font. My personal favourite font is Luckiest Guy, I just like the overall look of it and the aesthetic. Then you can change the size of it as well. Um, not normally though, what you have to do, you have to make a new layer, such as this layer 2 right here. And then you have to click merge down, because then it's a part of a layer, so it, do it doesn't act like normal text. You can't really see the text because it's black due to the, due to the black um, background at the moment. So right click on it, press blending options again, and then go on. I like using a gradient overlay, and then you can select the gradient colors that you wish to have. So I can make this color, for example. I think overall, because it's a blue, I think I'm going to make the background um, a nice bluish color. And then go, yeah, a, bl a bluish color like that. And then I make the other one, I don't really know, maybe a greyish because it just fits with the overall colour scheme of the actual bacon, just like that. And you press OK and you can do whatever. I'm going to add another stroke to it just so it looks, a, it just seems like it fits a bit more. Obviously this method takes a lot of time to actually master. Overall this is how you make Roblox thumbnails. Obviously I'm not a pro at making Roblox thumbnails because it's a me. We all have different styles. This is how I like to personally do them, but you could like to do them in a different way. Everyone has different tastes. So um, this is how you make it. So you obviously, all you do left is press file and press save as, export as, then a PNG, and then it should download to your computer or your laptop or whatever you're using. So yes, thank you for watching this tutorial. Yeah, um, have fun making thumbnails.